Hi guys. I'm apologizing because I said Mondays and it is Tuesday, but I got caught up with a whole bunch of work I was doing and didn't get on yesterday. So I'm getting on today. I am on chapter three of Radical Acceptance. That's what this live is about. If you want more lives or different lives, you can let me know what you want me to talk about and I will happily come on live. But for um, this purpose, I'm going to talk about chapter three of Radical Acceptance by Tara Brock. And that uh, chapter, you might see my dogs, it is, hi Zoopies, is called Sacred Paws. <laughs> Hi, Bubba. Okay. So, in the last um, kind of chapter, just a little review, not a total, but I told you that I think she was really focusing on awareness, right? Becoming aware to stop the uh, kind of paths that we've created in our minds, our habits of doing that. Um, and in this one, she kind of takes that one step further and gives you an amazing tool that I think everyone in mindfulness is uh, very well aware of. And what's cool about this is it's um, kind of like builds on awareness, but it also is something that can really start if you want to do a practice of gratitude or something like that. So basically the sacred pause that she's talking about is don't do anything, right? So if you are in a situation that you find yourself where you're reacting or somebody else is reacting, basically she is suggesting that you take the pause and pay attention to what's happening. Now, this links to that last chapter about awareness that you know I went into great detail about. And um, I ended last week with that challenge to do Vipassana. So I wanted to like make sure that if you didn't do Vipassana, please do it. Because it, it really, um, helps you be aware focus your awareness and there's a challenge at the end of today and that will is very linked to that ability to be in the awareness so if you haven't done last week's I highly suggest you go back watch last week's and do that challenge this week and then follow up with this even if you're a week behind because um, I, I do feel like you need to build your mindfulness practice and last week's really does set the groundwork for this week's so she talks about basically what happens to every single person and whether you are into mindfulness or not if you've listened to anyone talk about um, brain and behavior if you've talked to if you've been to a therapist basically our brain sets in motion these pathways, and they're usually based on fear, worrying, avoiding, judging. Um, and we do these things, often they're triggered by those emotions, but we have created a coping mechanism or a reactionary mechanism that is almost automatic. So it triggers something that lights up the part of the brain that says, oh my gosh, it's this thing that I fear or that, you know, is wrong with me or that I don't want to get involved with because X, Y, or Z is going to happen or this person is thinking this of me or I'm thinking this of myself and so I'm going to react this way because this protects me, right? The brain is all about protecting. So... By introducing the idea of a pause, right, it means that you're aware that you're triggered, right? You're very aware of where you are in the situation. You notice it. And remember I said that's the first step. This is the second step. And now pause. You're not moving towards a goal when you pause. So you're not pushing yourself or thinking of anything that you need to get to or finish. 
you're really being present and attentive and still. So the goal really is to calm, have that moment of calm. So if you're really worked up, this is something like you're going to have to learn to get to through baby steps. Um, it is being conscien conscious sorry, of your feelings. So this is not a pause where, you know, you're... I guess I think of corpse pose in yoga where, you know, like I try to be not aware of anything in that pose, but this is not that. A sacred pause means that you are very much aware of your feelings and your body and perceptions, but you're not engaging in them. Okay. So she goes on to say, you know, I'm reading all of my various notes. Um, you can stop hiding from whatever it is you fear. So she tells the story of the guy who tries to uh, outrun his shadow, right? So the shadow is following him. He's very well aware it is there. And he runs and runs and jumps over things and does all of these things to try and avoid his shadow, to try and get rid of his shadow, to try and, you know, just outrun it a little bit to give himself a little space. And what he really should have done was stop in the shadow and rest for a minute and that shadow disappears. So the power of not running, right, of not using those coping mechanisms, which may be very ingrained in us, um, is very powerful and is part of this pathway to radical acceptance. So she goes on to say that shadows, by the way, follow all of us, and they're made up of the things that we find unacceptable about ourselves. Um, she also talks about how the fact that they're formed really early, uh, which is something I talk about in my um, parenting coaching, right? That we form these shadows of ourselves based on really our interactions with our loved ones, uh, our attachment figures, and our culture. So anytime that we get negative feedback about things, they get kind of jumbled into this jar of our shadow person, right? And all of those unacceptable things we say about ourselves. We're lazy, we're impatient, we're dramatic. That's one for me. Like I'm a drama person. They and I, I actually think I'm very little drama, but I was considered very dramatic um, by my family. So, whatever. Um, but it's formed very early. And basically, there's rejection of some sort, right? It's unacceptable or not cool or whatever it might be. And it might be based on our culture, our religion, um, just our family or friends. Um, it's all dependent, you know, it's all individual, but we all carry a shadow of these things from running from what we fear only feeds that darkness and that rejection feeling. And so to face and feel shame to overcome this. So oftentimes because we have deemed it unacceptable. That shadow, our own shadow, is what brings the shame, right? And as I talked in chapter one, that's her kind of trance of unworthiness that we're trying to use radical acceptance to get over. So she goes on and she says, the pause does really mean not reacting to the feelings, but feeling and noticing the feelings. And by doing this in a mindful practice, you really give yourself space to do two things. I think one is to accept that the feelings are what they are because we're not judging ourselves in that moment. We're just aware and noticing the feelings. 
So when you do that and you take out judgment, it can be very powerful and it can be an aha moment because when your brain runs the reactionary pathways to protect itself, and those can be many, sometimes it's anger, rage, sometimes it's um, guilt and shame, sometimes it's avoidance, you just literally will avoid it at all costs. Um, when we run those, we sometimes are not even consciously aware of what we are actually feeling, like what that feeling is actually about. And I think that it is very important to your personal growth that you really dig into those things. So being aware and accepting that feeling no matter what, you know, like it's not about judgment at that point. And if you have judgment issues, there's a whole nother live I can do on <laughs> a series and books on releasing self-judgment and judgment of others. But during this pause, it does give you the space to really, A, be aware and evaluate your feelings, and second, to process. And that's the other like theme, I think, through this chapter. And she's really talking about stopping the old cycle and giving yourself to, time to process what's really going on. It's like a time out for yourself. It also allows you to recognize the old stories that are in Zebby enough that are in your head. So if she's, um, if you, and what I mean by those old stories really are some of what you have said to protect yourself. So we, you know, we take our shadow and we tell ourselves a story about it, right? And it's a way of protecting ourselves. And it's also, unfortunately, a trap for a fixed mindset, which I have talked about before. Um, Right. If you are telling yourself, this always happens to me, I'm always right, this person, it's the story you tell yourself. And when you um, are able to pause, you are able to be aware of the story that your mind is getting stuck in. So basically, I'm going back to my notes. Hi, Rebecca. Um, you try to express your feelings and experience and release that idea of blame and judgment of yourself or others because in the you know whatever triggered you could be you or it could be because of someone else and you sit in silence and that pause that silence that calm where you're not moving where you're not having a goal that you're working towards stops your spiral, gives you that insight and awareness, and then opens up the choices that you have because you're not running the automatic program in your brain of reacting how you have always reacted. So it allows you to think about what you're actually feeling, right? Like I'm aware, oh, because I'm so angry. And then during the pause, you can kind of see because I feel judged. And then you can go from that feeling of because I'm feeling judged and I'm feeling lonely or I'm feeling guilty because X, Y, or Z, what I really need is gives you that space to process. So in the Buddhist world, which is the other part I love about this book, um, and I ordered two other Buddhist books just because I feel like I really drawn to Buddhism. Um, they call this temporary nirvana. And basically there's this idea in Buddhism that temporary nirvana is actually what sustains us because it, it gives us the ability to move on and find A, some sort of hope in any situation and that got pulled into a downward spiral and it allows us to move forward beyond the reactionary. So I think that's kind of cool. I hope she goes into them a little bit more. Um, she tells a great story about a musician um, and he was being interviewed and someone asked him, how do you do it? How do you play these notes so perfectly and wonderfully? And he said, anybody can play the notes, 
But the pauses, ah, that is where the art resides, which is pretty powerful. I'll let you take that in all for yourself. So at the end, she really um, emphasizes that these pauses are a gateway to radical acceptance because, again, awareness, which I really focused on last week, um, and sometimes natural pauses occur during life. If you think about that, there are times that you catch yourself. Sometimes we even have said that those are the daydreaming moments or you, you, know, you catch yourself waiting in line and noticing something. It was a pause, right? Your goal is to get shopping and get done, but you have no control over how long this line takes. So sometimes life gives you these natural pauses and you'll find yourself noticing something. The baby smiling in front of you, the flowers that are off to the side. Um, sometimes you're you know, stuck in traffic and you can turn to the landscape and find like these momentary temporary nirvanas. And it's very powerful. Uh, so, I want to end this one with your next challenge. Again, I'm going to say, don't do this challenge if you didn't do last week's challenge because I think they build on each other. Um, but the challenge really is you're going to intentionally bring in sacred pauses for the next week, okay? So you're going to choose one task that you do daily and you're going to institute a pause before you do it. So this can be anything that you know is part of your routine. You know, if you, whether it's brushing your teeth, whether it's turning on your computer, whether it's exiting your car, whatever it is, you do it on a daily basis, choose whichever one, and you're going to take a few minutes before you do it you're going to pause and bring awareness to yourself. So how you do this is, and you, you can do this. Well, I'll, I'll get to that. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, she says you should choose when you're something that's involved in a goal oriented activity reading, cleaning, eating, walk, um, working on a computer, you're going to stop actively in that. Oh, look, look, something happened and it put on a mask. So it looks like I'm wearing lipstick, but okay, whatever. Then you're going to close your eyes. You're going to take in a deep breath. And you're going to start to pay attention. Um, if you've done mindfulness, you'll be aware of, the, of this kind of process. You're going to start to pay attention to anywhere in your body. And I usually start from the top, from the head, and go all the way slowly, process through my body down to my toes, noticing any places that feel tight or you're, you might be holding tension in, whether it's from stress or injury. And you want to try to relax. So if you get to a point in your body that you're finding that tightness, try to relax and breathe into it and release the tension in that area. And believe it or not, when you start at the top, sometimes you even hold tension in your face, like around your eyes or you're clenching your jaw. So Really try to breathe into that. Like if you find the tense, wait one breath and use the breath to kind of relax and release that tension. Once you have gone all through and you've released that tension, would like you to notice the sensations that you're feeling. Like are you feeling restless or anxious about stopping that goal-oriented thing you're supposed to do? Do you feel pulled to finish and go do the thing you were about to do? Um, and maybe the mantra or the thing you say to yourself is, can I allow for this moment to just be? Allow for whatever is happening inside you to happen and just take note. Okay. 
So after that, you know, and you breathe out, you had just paid attention to what it is, and then you continue into whatever that goal-oriented activity was, eating your breakfast, logging into the computer, gathering your stuff and exiting the car, whatever it is. I want, she asked that you notice if anything has changed when you go back to doing the, the activity. So just notate it. I'm not asking for you to analyze it. Just notate if anything has changed. Your breathing has changed. What you're doing in the activity has changed. Just take note, okay? That's your weekly challenge. And this one is a everyday challenge, right? Because it's something you do daily. It doesn't take a lot of time to do this, right? Relax yourself. Notice your feelings. Breathe back out. Open your eyes. Continue on your way. Um... If you can pause internally, especially in times when you feel disconnected, and this is her disconnected from the trance. Remember, when you're feeling lonely or sad or depressed or angry or frustrated, right? If you can, in those times, institute a pause, these can be real aha moments and help you towards your personal growth. So this is a really powerful... and activity. I'm glad she introduces it in the beginning as kind of like a really easy thing to incorporate. I would love to see below anyone who does this challenge what they thought, even if you think it's bunk. I would love to see um, if you did it, what it felt like and what your thoughts are on it. Next week is chapter four. I will return to Monday. I have it in my calendar um, so that hopefully none of my other stuff gets in the way. Um, if you have any questions, comments, want to discuss anything about this chapter, I'm more than happy to put those in the notes below. And I hope you have a fantastic fall week. It is gorgeous where I live. Um, I'm looking out the window at the gorgeousness uh, it, and it hasn't gotten freezing cold yet in the past. It has already snowed here. So it's been a warm fall. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoy it. Take a moment to become aware of the things. Take a sacred pause. Um, and again, Vipassana, if you haven't done it, is the beginning of mindfulness. So... I will see you next week.